guys, Thunder E here, and this is the video you guys asked for. I'm comparing, of course, the Oppo Find X2 Pro and the Galaxy S20 Ultra. Now, shoot me the front facing cameras here, and uh, it's a windy, windy day, so you're gonna see how that actually performs. But we will cover gaming as well, we'll just cover battery life, and we'll cover a few other things. So, but this is the time. So in terms of images, I do like what the Galaxy front-facing camera is doing much better. Rare images, I think, uh, are fine. But here we're looking at 4K60 video, and stabilization looks a little bit better on the Galaxy for me. Uh, while the Oppo is still really nice, uh, both of them look really good image quality-wise. But the stabilization, you can clearly see the Galaxy has the edge. Uh, Galaxy still has that autofocus uh, issue, which you will see show up uh, here and there, just right there. Um, but let's go ahead and check out, of course, our super steady and ultra steady modes. So super steady and uh, ultra steady, which is what Oppo calls it, uh, both of them look really good. I kind of like what Oppo is doing here because it's 1080p 60, Galaxy I think is 1080 30. Uh, it looks a little bit sharper, but the steady modes are really solid. Color science is much better on the Galaxy than what you have with Oppo. Starting off with the ultra uh, wide lens, both three look really good, different color palette. I like what I see. I think it's sharp and clear, although the lighter one right now is the Oppo Find X2. Now the main lens, again, the color palettes are different, but both images look really nice. So. I would say, yeah, they're quite solid here. Now you're gonna see some more sharpness when we get to 2X here. This is where the Galaxy S20 Ultra gets a little bit sharper. But again, both images are looking really nice at 2X. Moving over to 5X here, uh, you can see that they're still sharp. The S20 Ultra looks a little bit lighter in terms of when you look at the legs of the water tower with the rust, uh, but again, solid images. And at 10X, both of them are still sharp, but again, the brightness is coming more from the S20 Ultra. So I do like both images, but S20 Ultra is just brighter and sharper, which also does, the S20 Ultra does 30X and 100X zoom. Now, when we move to nighttime video, it's quite interesting here. You can see clearly the Oppo Find X2 looks brighter and sharper, uh, but the stabilization is not that great. You can also switch lenses though on the Oppo Find X2 uh, between uh, two different zoom lenses, as opposed to the Galaxy S20 Ultra, which has no lens change. You cannot change the lenses here in recording. Now, the, find, the uh, Galaxy S20 Ultra also is having that autofocus issue, so we'll wait for the update for that. And it's a bit noisier as well. The Find X2 Pro video looks just much sharper to me but stabilization is just not good here at nighttime 4k 60. now this is a, this is the shot of that street i was walking on uh, of course taking with the low light camera you can see the fine x2 the ultra ride really is brighter right here than the galaxy s20 ultra now this is another ultra wide image again showing you how bright the ultra wide is for the fine x2 over the galaxy s20 ultra but the s20 ultra is sharper the trees at the back are much sharper than what you will find with the fine x2 pro again Find X2 Pro has a much brighter image, almost daytime. Uh, the S20 Ultra is sharper, there's more contrast, there's more detail in the shots. Uh, and then when we move to 2X zoom, you can see that contrast and detail does help the Galaxy S20 Ultra over the Find X2, which now has a, a kind of a hazy colored look to it. There's no consistency with colors. 
when we go to 5x zoom then it gets really hazy here for both cameras although the s20 ultra does look better a little bit sharper i can tell the detail with the shrubbery and the uh, rubble of the back and at 10x zoom uh the fan x2 just could not take an image here while the galaxy s20 ultra will still be take the image it's fuzzy but hey, that's what it is. Now, when we move to the front-facing camera indoors, you can see how clear the S20 Ultra is as opposed to the Find X2 Pro, but X20, S20 Ultra wins here. Ultra-wide indoors in the bar, you can see how well the S20 Ultra does. Uh, again, there's a lot of red lighting and it just shows pretty well in this shot and everything comes out pretty clear. Now, with the standard lens though, I do like the, X20, the Find X2 Pro. Uh, over the S20 Ultra because it's just more natural. The S20 Ultra is more stylistic, but still really good, two really good shots. This is a 5X zoom here in the bar. I wanted to do this and you can see it's just sharper and clearer on the S20 Ultra over the Find X2 Pro. But again, you can still tell the details for both uh, uh, alcohols. Now, this is a shot of my friend Sam. Uh, the S20 Ultra is sharper, but the, I like the look of the Find X2 Pro. It doesn't add a lot of the red on his face. There's more details to him there, but it's a softer image compared to what you have with the S20 Ultra. So let's start off with displays now that we've finished cameras. Both of them have lovely displays, uh, QHD and QHD Plus, QHD Plus with the Oppo, and that display also is 120 hertz, just like the Galaxy S20 Ultra. But here's the catch though, the Oppo does 120 hertz at QHD+, while the Galaxy does 120 hertz at 1080p. So Oppo has an upper hand right there. And that's just something that, you know you can clearly see. Now, when it comes, of course, to brightness of that display, uh, that's something I found quite interesting. The Galaxy is usually a brighter display and is pretty bright, but this year I think Oppo also has the upper hand. Max brightness at 1,200 uh, nits, and it shows when you look at the uh, brightness levels and you also look at the, the wallpaper and even going to the browser, checking out the border work uh, homepage, you can see how bright that display is. Now, as I mentioned, of course, 120 Hertz, you're thinking about gaming and both of them perform really well. 240 hertz stretch sensing for both devices allows for very fluid motion and you can feel it. Uh, but when it comes to games supporting 120 hertz, uh, Samsung has a few games that do and Oppo has none at the moment. So things like Shadow Fight uh, and a few other games support 120 hertz. So you're gonna see 120 frames per second and you can see it within the gameplay while uh, with the Oppo Find X2 Pro, all the games are locked at whatever they are. So if you're playing Call of Duty and things like that, both of them you see 60 frames per second, Fortnite 30, but you know, right now Oppo does not support 120 frames per second for its gaming. Now, you're thinking, okay, you've got that, you're gaming with this device, battery, right? What about battery life? Now, battery life on here is quite interesting. Yes, the Galaxy has a bigger battery and it shows because you're gonna game at 120 hertz, 1080p, it actually does really, really well. While the Oppo, on the other hand, does drain quite fast because it's got a smaller battery around 4,200 milliamps. So you're going to see a lot of drain and if you're gaming at uh, QHD Plus with the 120 hertz uh, display, then you're gonna actually drain really fast. But when you want to top things off, this is where Oppo has another upper hand. The Find X2 Pro charges 65 watts, the Galaxy, and it comes with a 65 watt charger, while the Galaxy charges at 45 watts. Now, the Galaxy charges in 55 minutes, which is nice, but Oppo decimates that at 38 minutes for a full charge of zero to 100. Again, different battery sizes, 5,000 and about 4,200 milliamps. While the Galaxy does have other features like wireless charging, reverse wireless charging as well, so you have to put that into account. Now, in terms of audio with gaming and what you have, the Galaxy is louder at 105 decibels, Oppo is at 103, and when it comes to clarity, I have to say though, you can check out our uh, audio samples uh, from uh, previous videos. They both sound really well. They'll have Dolby Atmos built in. So I think you're going to enjoy the audio from both devices. I think overall though, that these are really two capable smartphones. When it comes to camera, I think the Galaxy has the upper hand in a lot of categories, except of course that autofocus issue, but the Oppo camera is no slouch in any regards, even in low light situations, which the Galaxy is better. Uh, but when it comes to the display, Oppo has the better display to me in this uh, position and they also have this other mode called the ultra vision that gives you something uh, gives you a HDR boost and, and get 
uh, pumps your videos to 60 frames per second. So if your videos went at 30, it feels a little smoother and faster in just in terms of the frame rate. So uh, this is a quite interesting battle and I want you guys to go ahead and tell me who you thought won. And if you have any questions or any comments, let me know guys. Don't forget to like and share this video, favorite this video, and always enjoy your entertainment.